Number 24. As stated in the text, convincing examples that demonstrate the law of conservation of matter outside of the laboratory are few and far between. Indicate whether the mass would increase, decrease, or stay the same for the following scenarios where chemical reactions take place. So the first thing I see here is A, B, and C. So I'm just going to write this A, B, and C. Now let's see what's going to happen. So for letter A, it says exactly one pound of bread dough is placed in a baking tin. The dough is cooked in an oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, releasing a wonderful aroma of freshly baked bread during the cooking process. Is the mass of the baked loaf less than, greater than, or the same as the one pound of original dough? Explain. So we can always write this as a products and reactants type of um, equation. So remember, reactants is what you always start off with, and it always turns into the products. So your reactants is the starting material. Your products is always what you end up getting. So in this example, we have one pound of bread dough. So I got one LB of bread dough. And it says it's placed in a baking tin. Okay, so now the reaction is starting to happen. It's cooked in an oven for 350 degrees and it released. So this is a product that was formed. If you release something, releasing is always what you form. So that would be on the product side. So with this one pound of bread dough, I put it in the oven and out comes a wonderful aroma and the freshly baked bread. So this is basically what's happening. You have one thing over here. You have the one pound of bread dough, and then it turned into the baked bread plus an aroma. Now, remember, aroma is a gas. We cannot see it, but we can smell it. And just remember, even though gases are super, super, super small, there's still molecules and atoms there, which account for mass. So if there's one pound here and you're releasing two things, this plus this, the combination of these two things, the aroma and the baked bread, all have to equal the one pound. So if you have to split this up, it definitely has to be less than one pound. So let's just say that this was, I don't know, 0 0.98 pounds and the aroma was 0 0.02 pounds. I'm just making this up. But that's what the law of conservation of matter says. The law of conservation of matter says that your mass on the reactant side has to equal the mass on the product side. So the one over here has to equal up to aroma plus baked, bleh, <laughs> baked bread. So is the mass of the baked loaf less than, greater than, or the same? The mass of the baked bread would be less than. So that's the answer to the first one, because you have to account for the releasing of the aroma. Letter B. When magnesium burns in air, a white flaky ash of magnesium oxide is produced. Is the mass of magnesium oxide less than, greater than, or the same on the original piece of magnesium? Explain. So here, we're going to do the same exact thing. Reactants, which I'll just say R, has to go to your products. So your starting material has to end with the ending material. So here it says magnesium is burning in air. So that means that magnesium had to react. Burning is a type of reaction. So Mg plus something. Now here I'm just going to say air because it's chapter one. But just know that whenever they say this, it's going to be O2. So Mg plus air, which is O2, will give off magnesium oxide. 
Once again, you don't need to know how to write the compound. I'm just going to put it here for you. Magnesium oxide is MgO. But this would be your reaction. Mg plus O2 yields MgO. Magnesium burned in air to produce magnesium oxide. Don't worry about balancing this equation. Um, if you want, I'll just put these here, but don't worry about that. Just focus on the reactants and the products. So now they're saying, is the mass of magnesium oxide less than, greater than, or the same? So let's see here. Law of conservation of mass means that the whole thing has to be equal on both sides. So this one compound has to be equal to these two things combined. So this plus this. What do you think? The magnesium oxide, would it be greater than or less than the original piece of magnesium? It would be greater than. Because... These two things, magnesium plus oxygen, would have to equal, add up together, and equal MgO. So if this one was one gram, this would have to be less than one gram, the Mg. So let's just say this one was 0.9 grams and 0.1 gram. So do you see how the MgO is greater than the original magnesium? That's why it would be greater than. Letter C. Anton Lavoisier, I hope I'm saying that right, the French scientist credited with first stating the law of conservation of matter. Oh, gosh, I should know how to say his last name. Heated a mixture of tin and air. So here it is again. We're mixing tin and air in a sealed flask to produce tin oxide. So here, there's that reaction again. You're mixing tin. Now, tin, I believe, is SN plus air. So tin plus air, would this would be O2, and you would get out tin oxide. Did the mass of the sealed flask and contents decrease, increase, or remain the same? Now, the key here is that it was sealed. So if you have a flask, right, and I'm going to draw it here, if you have a flask and you add tin, so I'm going to put tin as the yellows, and I'm going to put air as the blues, so here's SN, 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 O2 for air, and you seal this up, which means that literally nothing can escape. You're putting like, you know, a seal on it, so nothing can escape. Do you think that the mass of the sealed flask and the contents inside decrease, increase, or remain the same. Since it's sealed, that is my dog. I am sorry. He gets excited. <laughs> He's a crazy boy. Um, so since this is sealed, literally nothing would be able to get out, right? These would be reacting, but nothing would be able to get out. So the mass would remain the same. So there you go. First one was less than, second one was greater than, and the third one was remain the same because of that seal. If it was not sealed, then it would be a different story. But if you can't let anything get out, nothing's going to be able to get out. So all the mass that's inside will stay exactly the same. I hope this helped out a lot. I will see you all in the next lesson. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.